Okay, hi and welcome to this tutorial. Uh, this tutorial is about is going to be about creating a an animated logo of some kind, a logo type or whatever you want to do uh, using Dynamic Paint. Uh, now uh, I have another video uh, which covers the basics, so I won't be deeping, uh, diving deep into the details in this tutorial but uh, just to show you the tricks that I've used to create the, the animated logo that you see here. Okay, let's get started. We'll set up a new a scene here, a new file. And we'll name it Dynamic Paint Logo. Okay, good to go. Okay, I'll, I'll start with just uh, deleting everything here. Uh, no, I'll keep the camera. I'll keep the camera. Okay, delete, delete, good. I'll put the camera in a top view. So it's just pointing straight down. So if I press numcad zero, numpad 0, I'll get this. Good. I'll change the uh, resolution to 1024. No. 1080 times 1080. Good, so I have a square. I'll go into the camera to set the this to orthographic view. Uh, this way I won't have any any perspective in, in the in the camera. So I'll just set the orthographic scale to match uh, match the grid really. Okay, so that's like 10 uh, two, four, six, eight. Okay, that's sixteen boxes. Maybe if I okay, sixteen boxes. Great. Uh, <coughs> I'll start up with doing uh, my first canvas. Uh, I'll set it plane. I'll scale that uh, to to just about uh, just press S eight. Enter, and I get a uh, a uh, a plane like that. And I'll use that for my first canvas. So uh, let's say canvas effects. Uh, tr call that trails. Okay, good canvas trails. Now we first we need our first brush. Uh, Shift A again to create a new brush. I'll use a, a UV sphere. I'll scale that down somewhat, like that. Now I have something. I'll push it in a little bit more. Okay, looks good. Let's see how that looks from above. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And what I wanted in my uh, in my logo, my logo animation, my boot up animation was that I wanted this brush to go in a circular motion. Uh, so what I did was that I created a, uh, a curve. Uh, I think I did it. Did I do a circle or did I do a curve? I'll, I'll do a curve. Okay. Good. I'll scale that up. Perfect. Now I want the uh, the brush to go along this circle on the canvas. Okay, so everyone, everything is on the same plane. Uh, Z equals zero. Uh, so that's good. Uh, but I'll sh I'll select my sphere. I call this uh, brush effect, brush trail, brush. Uh, I call just call it brush. Okay. Um, and doo -doo -doo -doo. just give that a material new, just something to get it some uh, light. We'll use an emitter. Since we don't have any lamps in this, uh, I'll be using emitters a lot. So the actual color is uh, doing the uh, uh, carrying all the light. Just push this up to 100% white. Uh, so we have this white ball. If we push the render button, we'll get this white ball in the middle of nowhere. 
and uh, we'll see here. Da, 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 do. Okay, so we'll make this go along the uh, the the curb, the uh, circle. Uh, so we get to this uh, constraint tab, add object to constraint, and uh, follow path. Follow path, and, and right here we'll select Bezier circle. We'll give that a better name, I think. That's not a proper name. Uh, let's see, uh, orbit. Oh, okay, orbit. Great. It's called orbit. So now I'll. Okay, go back to the brush, follow path, orbit. Good. And immediately it just snapped to uh, the circle. So that's good. And down here we have the, uh, I think it's the, the offset. This is what makes the sphere now go along uh, the path. Uh, go along the curve. And as we have a sphere right here, uh, it doesn't matter if I follow the curve or not. Uh, let's see if, I, if we can see what that does. Um, I'll show you later. Okay, anyway, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at this point. Uh, and okay, from the top we'll see that okay, as this offset is changing, the uh, uh, the sphere is going. Uh, so if we start at start at zero and move it along, move it along, move it along, and at 100, boom, it's back to where it started. So one lap is 100. So we just have to animate that. Uh, so we change this to a timeline. We're already at frame one. Good. We'll get that fixed position to uh, zero. We'll press I to enter a keyframe. You can see that the yellow uh, line there indicates that we have a keyframe for this object on uh, frame zero. And right here we, we need to decide, okay, how long is this video going to be? Let's see, uh, 4 seconds, 25 frames per second. Let's give it, yeah, okay, 100. This is things that you can tweak afterwards. Uh, some of you know that I uh, my original animated logo was way too slow. Uh, so I had to speed it up uh, to 200%, which made it pretty good. And uh, four seconds to make this lap is not very quick. But this is just to show you the show you the ropes, so to speak. Uh, now, a toggle to the animation. You can see that okay, this uh, this animation is not very good because we have a an acceleration going on and then a, a deacceleration going on in the end. We want it to have to be linear, uh, like a planet rotating around the sun. That should be a, a linear speed. Uh, so with this uh, this curve selected, we can just enter key uh, interpolation mode linear. Okay, so then we have a linear interpolation between uh, between the frames. Good. Uh, so if I play this now, I just make this 100. Oh, 100. And I play this. Let's see from top view. Play this. Okay, we have something going that way. That's not the right way. I didn't want that. Okay, so we'll just select the... Uh, 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 the circle and we'll rotate that around the x-axis 180 degrees Let's see if that changes everything anything okay so now it's going the other way around perfect like in a clockwork clock uh, clockwise direction looks good great uh, 
but okay now we have a brush and we have a canvas but uh, we really need to make them draw something so first select the brush and this is things that I explain in the basic tutorial uh, that so if you don't know this you should probably watch that first just select dynamic paint select brush add brush uh, we'll keep the bluish paint so the new thing is down here uh, we'll see dynamic paint source uh, yeah we'll keep the mesh vol volume here for this one uh, good and then we'll change the uh, canvas dynamic paint again select the canvas and canvas and as we did in the tutorial image sequence is the one I would want to use pump that up to 2048 uh, start frame 1 and frame 100 sub steps yeah I'll keep that to 1 right now oh zero sorry keep that to zero right now and but I want I want I want dry time I want not dry I want to dissolve I want the uh, the paint to dissolve on the on the canvas after 25 frames uh, so that that would make the the paint disappear after a while so we'll get a nice uh, trail effect going on from uh, from the brush so we can just see that and uh, dynamic paint output uh, this is a good time to make sure you have good names for your folders folders so I'll call this uh, canvas trail sequence there we go accept so now all the images that I'm going to bake oh we, we forgot to UV unwrap this 7 tab I'll go back to default view uh, shading UV 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 unwrap project from view great let's go back into the UV editor we'll scale this up to cover okay it's not perfectly centered grab oh it doesn't really matter that much but anyway good 3d view uh, tap out of edit mode okay so now we have it uh, UV unwrapped so we'll choose no not brush type uh, dynamic paint output UV map great canvas trail sequence good PNGs great now we'll, we'll bake this okay the bake is complete and as you can see it took 1 minute 34 seconds so I think I'll uh, get down to 1024 for the future uh, baking of those that makes it a bit easier I think I hope uh, now to in order to check this out we first need to have a uh, material on it okay I'm just gonna fast forward this section it's the uh, you can see in the other the basic tutorial how the materials are set up now this doesn't really work because if I start the movie right here and have it and it's going uh, like this it will stop here at 100 and then all of a sudden the, the trail is gone when it gets back to frame 1 so you can't make a cyclic video out of this uh, what we need to do is make uh, like 25 frames extra uh, because the the paint uh, disappears in 25 frames uh, so what we need is to make this video 25 frames extra but 
as you can see here, we have a uh, a problem with we see these rings I was talking about in the in the previous tutorial, and in order to improve that, uh, we also need to up the sub steps in order to have a, a fluent uh, trail. But also, the trail is just as big as the brush, and I don't want that. I want a smaller trail. Uh, smaller tail to this brush then uh, I don't want it to be as big as, as the one I have here so what I did I also mentioned in the other video that uh, I could probably solve this uh, bubbly line by doing the uh, the brush like a square so the squares doesn't uh, and, and if the square follows the curb you wouldn't get this bubbly effect. Uh, you get this bubbly effect because the brush is round. Um, but first, first, first things first. 125. We increase the video, and uh, uh, then we can do a uh, another bake. Increase this to 125. Good. Big image sequence. Okay, so that's a lot, lot quicker. You see, 31, 32 seconds, and I even had more frames involved included in that one. Uh, so that was a good choice. Uh, now, if I move this to, let's start at frame 26. You can see that we ha already have a tail or a trail in uh, page tw uh, uh, frame 26, and by the frame 125. Okay, so we need to refresh this. Ah, no, no, no! I know what's wrong. I know what's wrong. We need to update the um, this one frames 125. We have 125 frames now. Okay, good. Timeline, back to timeline. There we go. Okay, it stops right because we haven't at the animation doesn't go more than 100. Okay, lots of rookie mistakes. Animated the the brush. Right here we have the keyframes. Uh, we need to enlarge those keyframes. We are going to 125. Uh, and we are going to make this to go to one, 125. Add another keyframe. Go back to 100 and press Alt I to remove that keyframe. And just to make sure, we'll go into animation to check that it's still linear. Yes, perfect. Um, so when this plays, Okay, it goes around the lap. Uh, good, no problems. Now, as I said, we don't want that big chunky uh, trail. We want a smoother, uh, thinner line. Uh, so instead of using this sphere, I still want the sphere because the sphere is a cool effect and, and it kind of looks like a brush. So I will use this as a visual brush but I will not use it as the brush that is painting on uh, the canvas. Uh, so I'll remove the brush from this one and then I will add a... let's see if we can turn off the, uh, the follow path for a moment. Okay, we'll move this up a bit, like so. And now I want to create a, a box, a, a cube. Control A, mesh, plane, cube. Good, but that's pretty big cube. I don't want to brush it that big, so I'll scale it down. So 
I want it about as long as the sphere, but I don't want it as as wide as the sphere. So let's scale it in x direction to get it more like a third or something of the size. Good. So now we have a a cube uh, that is going to be the uh, uh, the brush. So, and I want the brush to follow this sphere wherever it goes. Uh, so I'll mark that one. Sh uh, sh uh, shift mark the other one. Press Control P to set it to parent. And now the cube should go wherever the sphere goes. Uh, so let's uh, enable this uh, follow path again. Okay, so it's very it's been twisted around. Okay, yeah, the the circle. I rotated that 180 degrees. Maybe we can, if I select that and press Control A, rotation and scale. Yeah, that fixed that problem. I just applied rotation and scale. Good. So now we have a, a cube thing that is going to follow. We can check the animation. Yeah, it follows, but 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 you can see that. We don't we don't want this kind of effect here. We want the cube to actually follow um, to actually follow the line because this will be very it will get very choppy and wide. Whenever it goes down down here, it will be just as wide as the sphere, and that's not what I wanted. Uh, so we'll go back to the uh, the constraints on this one. And we'll add this one, follow curve. And let's see what that did. Okay, yeah, it did exactly what I wanted it to do. It oh, it follows the line. Uh, so that's that's what I want. Uh, good. And now we just have to make this a uh, brush. Good, and we're ready to do another bake. And see how it looks. Uh, so select the canvas, go down here, bake image sequence. Perfect, bake complete. Uh, let's see how it looks. Rendered. Yep, that's what I wanted. Much better, much better. Not perfect, but much, much better. And if we increase resolution and uh, this step thing, uh, sub step thing, that will be much, much, much better. But I think I think that's fine for now. Good. So that's part one, uh, creating the the brush and uh, the actual trail. I think we'll continue uh, with rest in part two. Thank you very much. I hope you could follow the steps okay and that I wasn't too slow. If not, please let me know in the comments below. And I'll be back soon with part two.